Hello, ISMers. It's my favorite time of year because the semester is almost over. Just kidding. Uh, but yes, we get exhausted just like you guys do. So uh, we're looking forward to a break. But it's also my favorite time of year because I'm sitting down with students that are getting full-time job offers and they're reading them in excruciating detail because there's a lot at stake. And I'm getting students that'll get a job offer for 60K a year and another one for 62K a year. And then they actually think the one for 62K a year is for more money than the one that's for 60K a year. And usually and often that is the case, but you have to read the details. And what I'm starting to realize is most students don't know what a 401k is, or in other words, a tax deferred retirement savings account or plan. So what's gonna happen is you're working and you have been working and you're paying into this thing called uh, social security. And one day when you leave the workforce and you retire, hopefully the amount of money that you paid into social security grew at a certain rate so that once you retire, you can pull money out. And then the day that you die, you will have consumed all of the money that you have put into that social security plan. Here's the problem. Chances are the government has spent what we've put into social security. You might not get that money back. And if you do, it might not be the amount that you thought you were going to get back. In other words, the amount that you put in and the amount that it was supposed to grow a rate at. My point is, don't depend on Social Security as your major source of retirement income. Uh, we still have a lot of people out there where the majority of their retirement income is in Social Security, but moving forward, that might not be the case because our government is spending money that it doesn't have. Either way, if you want to live large, for example, if you want to live in retirement like you did the year before you retired, then chances are you're gonna need something to supplement your social security income that comes in at retirement in your 60s or 70s. They might raise the age. You're probably gonna be the first generation in American history that's gonna be called the centurion generation. What does that mean? You're probably gonna live until you're 100 years old because of the advancements that American science and technology and medicine is making in regards to things like cancer and heart disease. Don't forget, when Pfizer came out with that uh, vaccine for COVID, it took two days to design the vaccine. Decades of research and science, they knew as soon as that virus hit us what it needed to look like, they designed that thing in two days. Why has it taken a year? Well, actually, it took less than a year to roll out. Supply chain management, okay? All right, so what's a 401k, a retirement savings plan? In a job offer, this is what most job offers look like for ISM grads. ISM grads are in demand Demand exceeds supply. So when they make an offer to you, it's gonna be a legitimate good offer. Uh, it's gonna be competitive. Otherwise, they're not gonna get the talent that they need. So they're not gonna to try to lowball you. They're not gonna to try to get you at a discount because that stuff doesn't work. When it comes to attracting talent, when supply and demand conditions are such that when you graduate, you might have two or three job offers to choose from, bare minimum, okay? So what they'll say is, often, we will match you dollar for dollar for up to 5% of your base pay that we will put into a 401k or retirement savings plan. So let me explain what that is. Okay, the company is saying, we're gonna pay you 60K a year. We're gonna take 5% of your base, which is $3,000, and we're gonna put $3,000 of our own money into your own retirement savings plan and account. Okay, if you put in $3,000, all right? So this is the cool part, is you make 60K a year. Let's say John Deere offers you a job and says we're gonna match you dollar for dollar for up to 5% of your base pay. 5% of $60,000 is $3,000. John Deere is saying we will put 3,000 of our own money, John Deere money, into your retirement account in your name. It's your money, but you gotta put $3,000 out of your 60K into that retirement savings plan or account. Now this is a cool thing. If you do this, John Deere is giving you their money, okay? But then also, if you do this, if you put 3,000 of your money into this retirement savings plan, it's tax deferred. What does that mean? You don't pay taxes on the $3,000. Had you taken that $3,000 home, the government probably would have taken $1,000 of that, so you only would have taken $2,000 home. 
by putting that money into a tax-deferred retirement savings account called a 401k, putting that $3,000 in, you've already saved $1,000, which is like making an extra $1,000. And also, because you did that, John Deere said they would match you dollar for dollar, which is another $3,000. So when you get a job offer, my recommendation is look at the 401k match. What percentage of your base pay will they match you dollar for dollar? Figure out what that amount would be. And then also, when you start working for that company, put in at least that amount. So in the case of John Deere and a lot of job offers that our students get, companies will offer between 2 to 10% dollar for dollar match. I tell my students, bare minimum, put in any amount. Otherwise, you're, you're just losing tons of money. The return on investment of a company matching you dollar for dollar and putting something into an account where you're saving 30% right off the bat, there, there isn't a stock in the world that you can safely bet on that's going to generate that kind of return immediately. So in that case, I tell my students, you'll have $6,000 a year going into your retirement savings plan. Now the question is, how much money can you take out of your paycheck and put into a tax deferred retirement savings plan like a 401k? In general, for most of you out there, you can put in $20,000 a year. Think about that. You make 60k a year. If you take 20k of that, the government's gonna get $6,000 less of your money. You've already made $6,000 right off the bat. And don't forget, that company's gonna match you dollar for dollar, not for that 20K, but for maybe two, three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000. My point is, you might have some goals when it comes to walking away from your job, from industry. Maybe you wanna start a second career. It's really easy to walk away from something that you aren't too excited about in your 40s, 50s, and 60s if you have millions of dollars sitting there that you can tap into. Okay, and a 401k lets you do that. However, to get the cumulative effects of money growing over a long period of time, you gotta save big on the front end because if you wait until your 50s or 60s to start doing this stuff, you're not gonna get the cumulative effect of compound growth. So uh, my recommendation would be for sure ask, what's the dollar for dollar match? Put that in bare minimum, then ask yourself, the government's going to let me put 20k a year in tax deferred, so I'm making money right off the bat. Ask yourself, between the amount that my company's going to match me and the 20k, what can I afford to do where I can still pay the bills, live large, have fun, and save for my future? And for most of my students, you know, if if your company will match you dollar for dollar for say up to three thousand, five thousand dollars, could you do another five to ten? Uh, and if you say that that would make it a little tight, I have student debt and loans to pay off, I want to drive a new car, I want to live a nice apartment, I want to uh, save money to uh, buy a house, that sort of thing. I understand. But if you want to be in your 40s, 50s, and 60s with three, four, five million dollars sitting there in your retirement nest egg, the way you do that is start saving at age 23 by putting money into a tax deferred retirement savings plan. and. Three to six thousand dollars a year might not get you two, three, four, five, six, seven million dollars when you're in your forties, fifties, sixties, and seventies. What gets you there is ten to twenty k a year. So if you can figure out how to do that, the other cool thing is, as you climb up the corporate ladder and you double your salary every five to ten years or three to five years, whatever it might be, if you're making hundred k by age thirty, then two hundred k by age forty, putting away that twenty k. It's going to be a lot easier, but then again, you're going to be married and have kids and have property taxes and a home and multiple vehicles, maybe sending your kids to a private school, and then you're going to send them to college. So I get it. The point I'm trying to make is the way to build wealth long term is to save a lot in the near term. And you can do that anytime you hear tax deferred and legally not having to pay taxes and companies matching you and putting their money into a retirement savings plan and account. That's where you can build up a huge retirement nest egg. Okay, so what's the downside to a retirement savings plan, a 401k? Well, not much. Uh, I can think of some, like you can't touch it until you're 59 and a half years old. If you take money out of that retirement estate before uh, 59 and a half, the government will whack you with taxes. So when you put money into this, you have to tell yourself, I can't touch this until I'm 59 and a half years old. And I realize at age 23, 59 and a half sounds like death, uh, but I'm approaching that age. And yeah, it still actually sounds and feels like death, but not as much as say when I was 25 or 30. By having saved so much in my 20s and 30s in this thing, 
when I'm 59 and a half in less than a decade, I'll have all sorts of options. I'll be able to job hop. I'll be able to walk away from my career. I'll be able to stay in my career and potentially spend money that I'm not spending right now. Uh, so it just creates all sorts of options. You can do what you want with life and you build in tons of flexibility when you know you just have this nest egg sitting there. And for most people, that's still a relatively uh, young age. And actually, I don't plan on touching mine until maybe I'm in my 60s and 70s. Uh, the downside is once you're 59 and a half and you start pulling money out, you're taxed on what the tax rate is for the amount that you're pulling out. So let's say you retire at age 60 and you're making $200,000 a year and you want to live like you did before you retire. So you want to pull 200K a year out of this retirement savings plan. You're going to be taxed on that amount, the amount that you take out based on what tax rates are at that time for someone that makes 200K a year per se. Now, you could say, well, when I start pulling money out, and if I want to pull 200 k a year out, will the tax rates be more in the future than they are today for that amount? What will taxes be like in the future? Good question. I've heard some people say that you can maybe over-save and over-invest in a 401 k if down the road taxes go through the roof, and when you take money out, the government wants 70% of it because they spent money they don't have and that's what it's going to take to pay the bills of previous generations and politicians that spent all the money that we don't have like COVID 2020 and six trillion dollars in stimulus and then it's 2050 and you want to retire or 2060 and you start pulling money out and the government takes 70% of it and you're like why are you taking that much money well apparently we've spent too much money the last few decades money that we didn't have money that didn't pay for itself that could happen, but if I know my America, we're never going to elect any politicians that will take 70% of our money. So uh, I still think anytime you can do anything that's tax deferred and avoid paying taxes legally, and you can build wealth. And these 401ks, companies pay financial services firms to create investment options. So you can have all of your retirement savings in bonds and precious metals and mutual funds in treasury bills, uh, in cash, in security deposits, or you can invest in equities like the stock market. So usually a company will hire someone that helps its employees manage its 401k. And you can change your allocation daily. You can say, today I want it all in stocks, tomorrow I want it all in bonds, I want it all in cash, I want it all in a guaranteed money market that just guarantees me 2 3% a year. And usually what they say is be super aggressive and risky early on. And then as you get older and older and you amass this small fortune, get less and less risky. So early on, you might be 80, 90% in equities or stocks. And then over a period of time, it might be less than 50, less than 20. But you can talk to your financial services advisor on what the best strategy and portfolio mix is. But it's yours and you have all sorts of investment options and that's up to you. Okay, I have a student asking, if I have a 401k and the company puts money in and I put money in, what happens if I change jobs? Uh, the cool thing is nothing with your 401k. It's still your 401k. You can leave it there with that company uh, or you can roll it over into a Roth IRA where you take a tax hit, but then moving forward, you never pay taxes on it again. Basically, your 401k and your retirement savings plan is extremely portable. In other countries, they can't do this and it precludes people from job hopping in the first place. In Japan and Germany, it's really hard for people to job hop because if they job hop, there are tax consequences associated with the retirement savings plan. In the United States, we encourage job hopping because we want you to always be able to go to the highest bidder and work for your market value, where we say, hey, you can roll it over into a Roth and if you're really young, this will actually work out long term where you pay less in taxes, or you can just keep it right there and keep investing like you were, even though the company's not gonna continue contributing to it. So our government actually says there might be some tax advantages to job hopping uh, and changing jobs when it comes to retirement savings plan, but for sure there are no economic consequences for doing so. They want a flexible, nimble workforce that can leave on a dime if they feel like they're not making market value with their current employer. Okay, when a company says they'll match you dollar for dollar up to a certain amount, here's one caveat. 
When a company, when you put a dollar into a retirement savings plan and the company matches that with one dollar, the dollar that you put in is always yours. No one can ever take that away from you. When the company puts its dollar in, they might say you're not fully vested until a certain amount of time for that dollar that I put in. Now, you, that, that dollar they put in might grow because you invested in the stock market. The money that you make on their dollar is always yours right away no matter what. But the company might say, all right, we're going to put a dollar in, but then if you leave tomorrow, you have to give 90 cents of that back. Okay? So when they put a dollar in, you might have to work two, three, four, five years to qualify for keeping that entire dollar. So if you change employers, one of the questions you're gonna ask is, all right, I'm gonna walk away from this 401k that I have with this company. How fully vested is that money? What amount isn't fully vested? And if I walk away, how much does that company get to keep? So you're gonna be able to keep the majority of it, but there might be an amount that they're going to keep because it's not fully vested and that amount might be large enough where maybe you don't job hop. Maybe you wait a little bit longer because you don't want them to take that amount, whatever it is. Some employers will actually say, when I put that dollar in, it's yours immediately. I work for someone that puts money into my retirement savings plan and it's not even a match. In other words, I don't have to put anything in. So if I put in zero, they still put in an amount, which is amazing. Most companies don't do that. And when they put money into my retirement savings plan, not only do I not have to put any money in, I'm immediately vested. So when Western puts a dollar in for me, it's immediately my money, okay? You probably won't have that option. So you wanna pay attention to when they put the dollar in, how long does it take before that dollar is all yours. And keep in mind, you'll be working for several years. So a lot of money, the money that they put in is going to be fully vested, but the more recent money that they put in when they're matching your contribution probably isn't going to be. Uh, so yet just something to look at when you job pop. But again, in general, uh, our economy is flexible and makes it lucrative and easy for people to job hop without enormous economic consequences to their retirement savings plan. Okay, I think that's a wrap on 401ks. When you get a job offer, start putting money into your 401k. It's tax deferred. You can do up to $20,000 a year. Bare minimum, put in the amount that the company matches dollar for dollar. I think between what your company puts in and what you put in, if you could be in that 10 to 20k a year range right away, when you're in your 50s, you're probably looking at a nest egg of three, four, five million dollars. Imagine being 60 years old and having five million dollars there. And let's say you can invest it where you get 5% a year. Isn't 5% of five million dollars, 250K a year? Uh, is living in retirement in your 60s on 250K a year a good quality of life and standard of living? 250K a year probably puts you in the top 3% in America. So yes, that quality of life and standard of living is exceptional. The only way you're going to get there is if you start saving large in your 20s and 30s. If you wait until your 40s and 50s, you might not be able to get there. I hope this was helpful. If not, ask me questions anytime and I'll try to clarify it for you. Thank you.